Hello, Eon here. This video is inspired by the fact that Cartoon Network has yet another new live action show in production. In other words, Level Up. But that's not what I'm going to be discussing. Allow me to tell you the tale through my own opinions and observations as to why I think Cartoon Network got to the point it is right now and why they still have live action programming on their channel. Let's rewind back to the 1990s, shall we? But I'm not looking at this particular time period through a nostalgic lens. Back in the 1990s, Cartoon Network really was a hub for cartoons and cartoons alone. That's really when it was a 24-7 cartoon channel. And that's all I'm going to establish it as. And then you have Cartoon Network's competitors, or their future competitors. I'm not quite sure if they were really competing back in the 1990s, but let's just... But, well, both Nickelodeon and Disney Channel had set up where they had both a couple of live-action teen sitcoms and quite a few cartoons. And at that point in time, the uh, concept of a live-action teen sitcom was still fairly new and original. They had some pretty big winners back then, I suppose. Even Stevens, The Amanda Show, one of my own personal favorites. And I think near the end of the 1990s, that's when they, uh, that's when they had the show starring Hilary Duff. I can't remember what it's called by now. And uh, That's So Raven, That's So Raven being another one of my personal favorites. Well, it was definitely the two before-mentioned shows, Hillary Duff's show and Raven Simone's show, that really caught somebody's attention, that really started rolling the gears and wheels in somebody's head. But, moving a little bit beyond the 1990s, around the time 2005-2006 came around, that's really when teen live-action sitcoms stopped being a new and original premise. And that's when Disney Channel really started molding the concept into something that can be dubbed the Disney Teen Machine. I'll get back to discussing that in a minute. What happened was that they came out with shows like Hannah Montana, and then you have the High School Musical franchise, and then things just kind of go downhill from there. After the success of those two in particular, you had the Sweet Life of Zack and Cody show up, and then the live action shows just seemed to be propagating until more and more and more appeared on the Disney Channel. And that's where the Disney Teen Machine comes in. What this is, is that I read an article a while back, and somebody dubbed what Disney Channel does as the Disney Teen Machine. That particular title kind of stuck with me, and I kind of like referring to this as that. What it is, basically, is that you take a preteen or teenage star, male or female, but predominantly female. First, you have them kind of make an appearance on one of the existing live-action sitcoms. Like, before Selena Gomez really became a big name on Disney Channel, she made a cameo appearance on The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody as an extra character. And then a little bit after that, after they've kind of established that they're some kind of actor or actress on the channel, they appear in the list of Disney stars. And then after that, they get their own show. And then some of them go as far as getting a recording deal or record or something like that. A lot of them tend to do this, but not every single one of them. It seems like every single one of them does, but I think there's a handful that haven't taken up on uh, being both actors slash singers. Well, what happened with the Disney Teen Machine was that it happened to be a huge success. The formula worked, so Disney kept rolling its dice over and over and over again with this concept just slight variations on the formula here and there, a different actor or actress starring or leading the show here and there. And that's how you got the Disney Channel that appears today. Well, another side effect of Disney having so much success with this stuff is that Nickelodeon's ears perked up and it was like, hey, maybe we 
should try this. Enter iCarly and Miranda Cosgrove. After iCarly became some kind of success and Miranda Cosgrove established herself as a singer slash actress, then they pretty much brought in Victorious and various other shows. Well, let me rewind a little bit there. Before iCarly had shows like um, Zoe 101 and the like, but Jamie Lynn Spears, I don't really think she established herself as a singer or anything close to what a Disney starlet was like. So that's kind of why I'm saying that uh, Nickelodeon really started copying, di copying and pasting Disney's Team Machine formula with Miranda Cosgrove, because... She comes off as the sa as a same icon as a Disney squeaky clean singer performer. And in the meantime, I'm pretty sure somebody in the Cartoon Network executives saw that both Disney Channel and Nickelodeon were having success with this stuff. So some guy started rubbing the side of his forehead, sort of thinking possibly for only five minutes, maybe even on the toilet. Let's say he was on the toilet reading his newspaper. And then, bing, light bulb, let's make CN real! Yes, I still like to use the running gag that CN real was the creation of somebody while they were sitting on the toilet. Not all great ideas come when you're in the bathroom. Well... I'm guessing CN Real was made as a response to Disney's formula, but let's... I'm just going to stop and say this much. I'm pretty darn glad that Cartoon Network didn't decide to just copy and exactly paste the Teen Machine formula, because then Cartoon Network would be a complete or close to a Disney clone, just like Nickelodeon is in some respects. In other words, pretty much teen stars, and it's all about them, and the channel being a launch pad for their careers. Yeah. Well, I might as well rewind a little bit. I don't think CN Real was Cartoon Network's first reaction to responding and kind of trying to combat Nickelodeon and Disney Channel live-action attempts. The first real attempt on their part was out of Jimmy's head. Both the movie and the television show. Actually, Out of Jimmy's Head plays out more like a Disney Channel or Nickelodeon show, more than any other one of Cartoon Network's live-action productions. It's the only one that really tried to use the formula in any way, shape, or form, and it's very, very bizarre execution of a bizarre overall premise. What really made Out of Jimmy's Head fail was not its premise or... It wasn't the premise, it was the fact that they had too much going on. In other words, everything from an alien sister and an astronaut mom to some dude trying to steal Jimmy's brain constantly and trying to cram this into the Disney formula. And the Disney formula is just simple copy and paste. It's just one simple thing. You have a couple of characters, a comedic situation, a couple of episodes involving a boyfriend, just stuff like that. Cartoon Network was trying too hard, in other words, and it just kind of fell flat on its face. And yet, after Out of Jimmy's Head failed, in comes CN Real. I'm guessing when they realized that trying to use a formula to some extent wasn't going to work, they decided to take a different approach. In other words, try to appeal to the demographic that Disney Channel and Nickelodeon really seem to be leaving out. In other words, most of Nickelodeon and Disney Channel's demographics, their biggest demographic that they were appealing to, was preteen to teenage girls. I'm guessing CN Real was an attempt on Cartoon Network's part to attempt to appeal to both, but predominantly, definitely preteen boys. But, while well, CN Real sort of started up and Cartoon Network advertised the hell out of it as much as they could, they threw it in your face, they stuffed it down your throat, it ended up failing. It's pretty much gone. Not, uh, heck, even the, even the little title that they had at the bottom of the screen, saying it was CN Real doesn't really 
exist anymore, I don't think. The only real remainders of that are Destroy Bull Destroy and Dude What Would Happen. And those came up came out after what, a year or so of cancellation? Why I'm not entirely sure, but that's pretty much the leftover to see in real. Every production since has kind of just fallen flat on its face, unless it was a cartoon to live action movie car um adaptation. And those are just movies, so they're pretty much just standalone projects. But Cartoon Network's next attempt at live action after seeing real, their next biggest project, appeared to be, well, unnatural history. They gave that some pretty ample advertising. They hyped it up, they had interviews with the cast, commercials about that. It looked like it had a pretty interesting premise, and, well... They definitely had some budget for the show, because from what little I watched, they had uh, decent cameras, decent effects, decent actors. The problem was the execution. But it wasn't a bad enough show that it deserved to get trash canned. I've seen Disney Channel shows that have absolutely pathetic, fall-on-your-face-in-the-mud acting, yet they stay on the air for close to two or three years. And then Unnatural History, I don't even think it made it beyond a year in airtime. And then a little bit after that, you have Tower Prep. I don't think Cartoon Network produced this one. I'm pretty sure it was made by a completely different production company. And... Well, it looked like it was pretty well executed. I never really sat down to watch the show, but I was half tempted to. Somebody actually told me it was a decent show. Apparently, they had some pretty decent story writing. They even had kids with uh, superpowers. That sounded like a really interesting series, and it sounded like the uh, ending was a cliffhanger, too. I'm going off of something that one of my friends said. He was a uh, fan of this particular show. And then... That one didn't really run for as long as a year, either. It was pretty much left standing, like Unnatural History. Is Cartoon Network going to pick up a second series of this, or has Tower Prep just vanished off the face of the Earth? I haven't really done any research into that. I just know that it's pretty much gone on Cartoon Network. When it comes down to it, I think Cartoon Network just keeps trying to build up these live action shows because they're bound and determined to find an audience somewhere within that sea of live action fans. Why? I'm not entirely sure. That or some of these people producing these shows have some kind of personal connections with the executives. There's a lot of different factors that could come into play with that. But beyond that, there really doesn't seem to be much reason for Cartoon Network to continue to try pushing live-action shows. That's why there really isn't much hope on Tower Prep's part. I know, I mean, Level Up's part. I know that Cartoon Network advertised the hell out of this, just as much, if not more, than both Unnatural History and Tower Prep. But, I haven't really seen the uh, ratings or how many people actually watched the night that Level Up premiered, it definitely had tons of advertising from both on television and game stops, YouTube videos right before them, and then the live-action spin-off series, not so much. I'm not discrediting that it'll be a decent series or that it might surpass its uh, predecessors, but how far is it really going to get? I just don't think it's going to live up to the expectations the Cartoon Network's setting for it. In other words, I'm pretty sure somebody's probably bound and determined to resurrect CN Real again, or at least get more than just that live-action program on Cartoon Network. But the thing is, no matter how much they want a solid CN Real block with as many shows as it used to have, 
I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. I don't think their current live action programming really draws in enough ratings for them to do that. I don't know if Level Up could do that. But when it comes down to it, their cartoons are still their bread and butter. They've got stuff like Adventure Time, Regular Show, the Looney Tunes Show. I'm pretty sure all of these alone are drawing in more ratings than their live action attempts. I don't think Level Up could even pull in as many ratings as just Adventure Time. I might be wrong on this, but I highly doubt it. In other words, I guess what I'm saying is I'm pretty much done analyzing or venting about certain live action shows. There were certain things that led up to Cartoon Network producing live action to continue competing with its competitors. I still don't support live action on Cartoon Network, but it doesn't make any sense on my part to keep making videos venting about it. Because when it comes down to it, cartoons are still the dominating factor on Cartoon Network. They're still the kings of ratings, and what keeps Cartoon Network afloat. So, there is no way any kind of live action show could really be enough to bring CN Real back to resurgence. Now, I might be wrong. Level Up might be enough to do it, but considering the odds against it right now, they're pretty slim to none. I'm not telling you not to watch Level Up. I'm not telling you that any live-action programming that you watch is bad. As a matter of fact, I'll outright admit that there's a couple of live-action teen sitcoms that I enjoy watching. There's a few that I consider my favorites, too. I pretty much only made this video to say that I'm done making ranting videos and sort of give my observations and final thoughts and opinions on CN Real. After today, the subject is closed. I'm not going to say anymore, but I do have a new target. I am going to start discussing a different channel, pretty much, or a different part of Cartoon Network, pretty much in videos like this. And the next video I'm going to be making is going to be on Adult Swim. This is Eon, signing off.